The vaquita is the world's smallest and most endangered cetacean, or whale, dolphin, or porpoise, with just a handful of individuals remaining in the wild. This has led some to ask the question, couldn't we just clone the vaquita? Wouldn't that solve the problem? It's an idea that's come up before. In 2018, the Mexican Minister for the Environment even said that, should vaquitas disappear from the wild, they could just be cloned. Problem solved, right? Well, maybe. While the technology for cloning has been around for a while, the first mammal to be cloned was Dolly the Sheep in 1996, cloning an endangered species is a pretty complicated process. Let's look at an example of an endangered species that has been cloned, and we'll see if we can do the same thing with the vaquita. Our success story is the black-footed ferret, a native of the North American grasslands and my new BFF. Like the vaquita, the black-footed ferret has been driven almost to extinction by loss of habitat and encroachment by humans. The first black-footed ferret to be successfully cloned is Elizabeth Ann, a super cute baby ferret who was born in late 2020. She was cloned by a group of researchers who hope one day to release her into the wild. So how the heck did they do it? To clone any animal, you need three things. First, you need the genetic material of the animal that you want to clone. Basically, this is the instruction manual for the species that you're trying to clone. You would get this by extracting the nucleus from a cell, which would contain all of that animal's genetic material in the form of DNA. For our ferret friend Liz, the genetic material used to clone her was taken from a ferret named Willa, who lived way back in the 1980s. Liz and Willa have the exact same DNA. Next, you need a cell to put that DNA into. Specifically, it has to be an egg cell, or a cell that is capable of growing into an embryo. Ideally, this egg cell would come from another member of the same species. But because it's risky to extract an egg cell from a wild animal, especially an endangered one, scientists would likely use an egg cell from a more common donor species. In the case of the black-footed ferret, scientists used an egg cell from a domesticated ferret, like the one your quirky neighbor down the street has. The extracted DNA is then inserted into the egg cell through a process called somatic nuclear transfer. This is just a fancy way of saying you take a nucleus from a somatic or body cell and stick it in an egg cell. Our donor nucleus and egg cell are then fused together with a shock of electricity and are now able to grow into a baby black-footed ferret. The last thing you need is a suitable surrogate mother that will carry the baby clone ferret until it is born. Again, it's best if the surrogate mother isn't an endangered species itself. Once the embryo is in the surrogate mother, you just wait a couple months to a year depending on the species, and you got a baby clone. Now that we know the process, how would you clone a vaquita? Well, the first step is already done. In 2018, scientists collected samples from a wild vaquita and took them to the frozen zoo, a giant freezer full of cells from endangered and extinct animals, in the hopes that the vaquita someday might be cloned. This sample would provide the instructions, or DNA, from which the new vaquita would be cloned. The second and third steps, finding an egg donor and a surrogate mother, are a lot trickier. The black-footed ferret is lucky because it's closely related to the domesticated ferret, which can easily be used as both egg donor and surrogate mother. Being a domesticated animal is a huge plus, because the surrogate mother has to be okay with being poked and prodded by scientists for the better part of a year. Most other endangered species that have been successfully cloned are also closely related to domestic animals, like camels and horses. The vaquita is not so lucky. The animal most closely related to the vaquita is thought to be the Burmeester's porpoise. Only a single Burmeester's porpoise has ever been kept in captivity, and that was only for a day or so. The slightly more distantly related harbor porpoise is also very difficult to keep in captivity. The only cetacean species that's been successful in captivity that's even remotely related would be the bottlenose dolphin. But it's unlikely that flipper could be used as a surrogate because the species are just so different. The more distantly related two species are, the less likely it is that the cloning process will work. Even though they look similar, comparing a vaquita to a bottlenose dolphin is like comparing a cow to a sheep. Pretty different, right? So can we clone a vaquita? Well, the technology exists, but it's more complicated than it might seem. It would take years of research in both molecular and cetacean biology. Finally, once the vaquita is cloned, there's no guarantee that it would be able to survive in the wild. It might end up in a gill net just like its wild cousins did. And there would be no vaquita left to show the baby how to do vaquita things like where to find food and where to live. Cloning a vaquita just to have it live a confused and lonely life just seems really sad and unfair. This problem is compounded by the fact that no one has ever figured out how to keep a vaquita in captivity. To me, instead of cloning endangered species, it makes more sense to conserve what we already have by protecting our wild spaces and by stopping the trade in illegal wildlife. 
What do you think about this technology? Is it a good idea or a bad idea? And what endangered animals would you clone? Would you use this technology to bring back extinct animals? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to hit like and subscribe if you learn something new. Until next time, I'm Mr. Harris, class dismissed.